Well, good afternoon. Um, just finished practice five. Uh, been good so far. It's uh, third day kind of in our half pads. Tomorrow we'll get to put on full pads and uh, still evaluating a ton of guys. And that's kind of what we're, what we're doing right now. All our install offense, defense, looking at our younger guys, looking at uh, new guys, especially um, the ones that just arrived here in the summer, uh, as uh, as well as the kids that are redshirt freshmen that have kind of been in the program a little while. So uh, it's a work in progress. So I'm sure you guys got a few questions. Let's take them. Obviously, on paper, you're a little bit more explosive on offense this year. Has it kind of played out that way so far in practice? Um, yeah, you can see that we have a, a lot of good team speed, and, uh, and credit Coach True and Coach Ray and, and, and the strength staff because our kids are – are fast. We've got really good speed now. Um, we just got to make sure that we get them, find ways to get them the ball, and and um, design some things to get get uh, make sure that the touches go around. But now yeah, we've got pretty good team speed on offense. The new pieces you want to kind of make a move on the offensive line are are they surging right now? Yeah. Um, well, Sam Hex probably got the most important one. They're all important, but the fact that he's the center, he's touching the ball every play and. Um, had a really good summer, and I think he's off to a really good start. It helps when you've got uh, um, TP and, and uh, Hadley next to him and, and Carver outside, but uh, uh, some of those guys are, are coming along, and, and we're continuing to develop some depth there as well. How big, it, how big of a difference has it been to have extra coaches on the field this camp? Huge difference um, in the fact of, you know, you, you can split up a lot of things. Uh, we can have – you know, we got three different positions at safety. Really, we can have three different guys coaching. Um, you know, having Coach Katz in and utilizing his expertise. Uh, Katz are as a special teams guy, and so he and I and Clint Brown are doing a lot of special teams work. And um, you know, having Drew Little come back, it was a really good time for us to get Drew back. Because he's, you know, he's one of one of the top O line coaches, and uh, it gives Riles, I think, an opportunity to go move around uh, and watch some different past game seven on seven stuff but uh um yeah it's been fun not to not to worry about it and just let guys go coach is there anybody who's who you're willing to say has caught your eye and impressed you through a couple days of camp yeah it, it's so hard right now because we we without going to the ground without pants on we just kind of stay up on everything there's some uh some young guys that are continuing to get better but we We've talked about this. We've had a really good um, redshirt freshman class that uh, some of those kids are true sophomores, the Jason, the Avery. But the kids we redshirted, there's several defensive linemen, some DBs, uh, some tight ends that, that are doing some good things. So uh, I know that that's something that we're excited about because there's, you know, we talked about it as a uh, as a team. There's a lot of guys that people know about, everybody knows about that are playing for K-State. But there's a lot of guys that only people in, in our room, in our building, kind of know about and you guys will know about pretty soon because they'll get a lot of, a lot of snaps out there. Can you expand a little bit on those young defensive ends and what you're seeing from them? Um, Cheedy, Ryan Davis, Jordan Allen uh, are the first three that come to mind as far as uh, all guys that uh, redshirted last year. You know, we've got Mott and Stuff back, which is um, awesome to have those guys back. Throw in Travis Bates that we got this year. We have a lot of depth there, so we're, we're trying to find different ways to get some guys on the field. But, you know, Cheedy is bigger than the other two. Um, maybe by 15, 20 pounds. He's playing a little bit different position. Um, just I think Coach Wyatt's done a really good job with those guys because they um, have a different skill set. One of them may play the run better than the pass. Somebody may play the have a better pass rush. We're trying to – we need to steal a lot of snaps from those guys. Those guys can't just be auxiliary players. They've got to be um, really – Consistent role players are going to get 15 to, to 30 snaps a game based on how the game plan goes and how we're, what kind of offense we're facing. But uh, uh, I'm excited because we we have a, a a lot of depth and a lot of talent in that in that room. Tackle position. Um, Damian and, and Uso uh, are, are the guys that um, are taking a lot of snaps. Obviously, that have taken a lot of snaps for us. I think Damian. Um, his late season push when Uso was hurt, uh, I think has given him a ton of confidence and he's playing at, at a really high level. He learned so much from Eli in the past. And then 
Uh, Asher Tomaszewski has done a nice job uh, coming in um, uh, as a guy that we think can be a third. We're still learning about some of the n- true new guys that are that have come in here at D tackle. And also, uh, is Sam Heck pretty? Set at center right now? Yeah, Michael Capri is doing a really good job. Cap uh, uh, is progressed really well, and, and we feel like we have depth there. Um, Sam's got a little bit more um, game planning experience, but um, um, right now Sam's doing a really good job, but I like what Cap's doing too. Linebacker-wise, obviously Austin and Dez are, are pretty set there, that that third guy who are, who are some of the people that yeah, are fighting that um, out. Bo Palmer and uh, Austin Romaine are, are playing inside. Alec Marenko is a kid we brought in, uh, been a little bit slowed by an injury, so he's missed a little bit of time, but he'll be a part of that mix as well. Um, Asa Newsom back healthy really is good. You know, Asa's at full speed rolling around. Um, Rex Van Wy, Zach Wittenberg are doing a really good job at that Will linebacker spot. Uh, and, uh, and we've got some young guys that we're evaluating and, and looking at, but uh, I'm excited. Terry Kirksey's a guy that uh, um, has really done a good job of learning from that first year where it's hard to come in here and, and figure it all out. Um, and the game has slowed down for Terry quite a bit. And um, you know whether it's as a as a role player at linebacker or on special teams, Terry's earned some opportunities, and so we. That's what's you know when when Terry's gotten better, Zach Wittenberg's gotten better, Rex Van Wy's gotten better. Get Asa healthy back. If we can stay healthy at linebacker, you, we can keep those those top guys fresh and healthy and ready to go. And then, as far as Dylan Edwards is concerned, mm-hmm. what, what's impressed you most since he's gotten on just, campus? Just the fact that he's got that burst, you know, um, and uh, he can um, – looks like he shot out of a cannon at times. I mean, you, you see him and he's just got that quick quick feet and that burst through the hole, um, still learning offense. There's a lot of offense to learn, and we're trying to spoon-feed him a little bit so um, that he can pick up as much as he can, learning from DJ – um, been impressed with Le James White that's been in the program uh, a, a while. Le James is doing some really good things. It started to really slow down from him from a mental standpoint, and Le James can provide us a spark. Joe Jackson's been healthy, um, so it's good to have have Joe um, giving us some looks as well as Devon Rice and, and Evan Cantu. So we, we've got some good guys at, at running back. So it's just a matter of um, kind of plug and play based on what the game plan is and, and uh, skill sets of guys. For the guys behind Avery, how is that battle for, for it's been two good. and three going? Taquan Roberson's uh, been a really good acquisition for us uh, as, as a mature guy. That's an older guy that uh, is learning our offense. The game keeps slowing down for Jacob Knuth. I've uh, been really impressed with Jacob as his continued growth. I thought he did a really good job in the spring when we didn't know a lot about him because he was our scout team guy um, and did a really good job in the spring. And then uh, did a lot of things on his own this summer, and uh, you know I, I think he's his improvement has been really good. I, I feel good. We, we're not at all close to saying who's going to back up Avery. That's that's going to take quite a long time for us to get it figured out. But I've been impressed with both guys. Both guys um, could help us. I feel like I ask this about every year now, but you all have come off a win. There's excitement in the air regarding this team. Mm-hmm. What kind of momentum do you guys have entering the season? Um, you know, that momentum's over with, I mean, really, I mean, what we did in the winter and the, and the, and the spring and the summer, um, credit true Carol and our, our strength staff. And then our support staff with athletic training, uh, with Scott Troush and nutrition, those guys are the ones that get them ready throughout this summertime as, as coaches are meeting with them a little bit, but, um, either recruiting or, or getting away a little bit, our support staff, uh, is second to none. Our support staff gets these guys ready as well as the leaders on, on each group. And so that's kind of been the challenge for for us to the guys is, yeah, there's there's excitement. There's really good momentum from the end of the season and excitement of, of um, uh, maybe expectations. But, you know, forget about the expectations, man. Just go about your business daily and, and uh, stack, stack day after day after day um, don't talk about championships. Don't talk about what we can be. Let's talk about what we can be today. And um, 
I think our, our older guys have really bought into that and really done a good job. And, and it helps when we have really good equal competition offensively and defensively. We haven't gone any live sets for me to say, boy, the offense won today or the defense won, t- uh, won today. But there's really good competition uh, on both sides, and they push each other. And, and that's what we've got to continue to have is guys push each other on a daily basis. To that end, just what kind of energy, effort are you witnessing on a daily basis? Yeah, really good. We've had we've had great practices, and we've had five is all. Um, there's always that great excitement those first two days when it's helmets and jerseys, and, and then all of a sudden we put the pads on. Uh, guys will get to be a little bit more sore, um, but they've bounced back each day and been ready to go out there. Now we're five practices in. We've got a long ways to go in fall camp. And if we can keep that that energy and, and that excitement and that uh, ability to realize, you know, what I did yesterday is nothing. I got I to gotta go attack today. Uh, and that's kind of what we're focused on right now. I thought we had a good practice out there today. It was, it was physical. Guys were flying around. We've got to continue to do a good job of communicating, especially the guys that have been around here, uh, of continuing to be nonstop chatter of what they see pre-snap on both sides of the ball. We got to get some of those other guys that are going to play a significant role to open up a little bit more, um, because we're going to need those guys to understand what we're doing to be able to communicate. Which I was going to ask you about the corners. Everybody knows you have Keenan back and, and Jacob, but it, it seems like you've got other guys there that can help you pretty quickly. Yeah, and let's hit Keenan and Jacob because those guys are both close to 200 pounds, and that's crazy to think what what uh, those guys came in. You know, and Keenan was a wide receiver, and Jacob was a, a, a quote a smaller corner from from Olathe North, and both those two kids are pushing 200 pounds. They're plus 195 for sure, and I know they've both touched 200, and they're faster. And that's the, probably the neat thing for me is they've gotten faster as they've gotten bigger and stronger. So, uh, plus they've had tons of reps and experience. Justice James is in that boat with with Terry Kirksey and Le James White. It's slowing down so much for him. That um, he played a lot of football for us last year, but he's we're more and more comfortable with him um, being right now that third guy. It is a big battle for that fourth spot, and uh, that fourth spot's going to play a lot for us as we get into some nickel and dime things um, based on personnel. So whether it's uh, uh, Jordan Dunbar, Kanigel Thomas. Uh, Donovan McIntosh, there's a lot of guys there that are taking some of those reps, and um, we've got to make sure that they can take legitimate game reps to take some off of those two top guys as well as be the guy when we go to nickel and dime. I was going to ask you, too, about Jordan Riley. You always seem to have a guy who you know, is a plug-and-play guy yeah. out of the portal, and it seems like he's just a real fit for you. Yeah, we've been really uh, fortunate and, and done some really good things uh, evaluating – not only talent, but but vetting the right type of guy coming out of the portal from, you know, Rush East to Julius Brents uh, to Josh Hayes to Reggie Stubblefield. Um, there's so many of them, and now we've got Jordan Riley that once again came in here in the uh, in the spring, so he got a lot of of experience under his belt. Played a ton of snaps at Ball State, but now he's learning our defense. Learned it in the spring. Has become one of the better vocal leaders we we have in the secondary. And when you throw V.J. Payne, that is a really good vocal guy now, always has been, but he's really a lot more confident. And Jordan Riley and Marquis Siegel, you got three guys that are older guys that are um, really good football players that uh, um, can really run the show back there. Switch back to Kirksey for a moment. Is it the same today as it was – six, seven, eight years ago when a guy comes from the JUCO ranks to this level. I know he was a little bit beat up last year, but yeah. has, is is he a guy that has all of those tools? Yeah. Um, I, I guess the difference from six to seven years ago is if they didn't play their first year, they probably left, right? And uh, six, seven years ago, they, they found a way to uh, fight through it and learn what they're doing. And, I, and credit to Terry um, because um, – he struggled last year mentally of, of picking it up. Plus, he was banged up a little bit, had a hamstring, had some other things. So we, we never could really see um, the kid that we knew we saw when we watched film and saw him live in junior college. And he stayed the course. And um, he's a wonderful kid. I, I love Terry because 
He is. He loves football. He's locked in. He loves the guys at K State. He listens to Austin. Listens to Dez, and it's slowed down for him. And now he's playing a lot faster and playing with confidence. And uh, um, you know, I, there's a guy that uh, said, "I'm not listening to the outside noise, so to speak," and say, "Man, I'm not ready yet." And then he worked his butt off, and he's going to help us this year. You were asked moments a, a couple moments ago about you know, is there somebody you want to mention already? In terms of guys that are standing out, yep. it, a little twist to that: Are there a guy? Is there a guy or two that's really intriguing to you right now? That whether they've taken that quantum leap, or you're yeah. like maybe it's three or four games in that this might be one of those guys. Yeah, um, I think. Gosh, I'm the first guy in the press conference, and everybody else gets to go after we've had more and more practices because it's so hard after five days. It, it, it really is. Um, you know, uh, Keegan Johnson is a guy that we can keep him healthy. I think he's one of the best wide receivers in, in the Big 12. And uh, our, our, our staff knows that as well. He continues to improve. Um, Keenan Garber is another one that everybody knows he started and that stuff. But, you know, it wasn't that long ago the kid played at corner after playing wide receiver for – 16 weeks and he's playing in a Big 12 championship and now you see all that work that he did in 23 the kid's a really confident corner and glad he came back for another year he's just a really confident guy uh, going into his last year Fitch you've never moved that fast <laughs> Uh, that's true. <laughs> Vegas. That's going to be a good question. Yeah. Um, special teams, uh, I know bringing in uh, Coach Katzer, but mm -hmm. also what? where do you think you can make the most improvements there? Um, well, we're excited that Chris Tennant's back. And um, Chris has tremendous leg strength, is, is a confident guy, is the leader of that room. And it took him forever to be the leader of that room because Randon was here for nine years. Um, but now Chris is be able to lead that group. We are wide open right now at punter. Tegan Cobb, Simon McClanahan, Simon does, and Tegan are going to battle it out. Um, Leighton Simmering's done a really good job as a kicker and gives us really good depth there. And can probably kick some field goals, and, and we got to make sure and keep Chris fresh. Um, and, um, and and so Cat's coming in has helped those guys because we've always had a special teams guy with me that has been the overall special teams guy. Now we've got somebody that's a specialist coach as well that can deal with long snappers, punters, and kickers, as well as see the whole approach um, uh, from all four units. And it's so fun to have – sit in this meeting room uh, in the morning with with him up front talking about special teams, and he's done it at the highest level and been a special teams coordinator in the NFL for uh, a number of years that what he's saying these guys are listening to because there's so many of them that have that aspiration to play at that next level, and he keeps harping on, unless you're a first-round guy, you're going to play on special teams. And whether or not we use you on special teams – the more you can be a sponge and learn these techniques and learn the terminology and learn what we're doing, you're going to have an opportunity to stick in a camp um, if you're a free agent guy or a late-round draft pick because of special teams. And it's been fun to see the older kids really gravitate to that to say, man, it's a, it's, it's a packed room like it always is, and there's a ton of notes being taken um, because um, he's lived it and he's helping those guys. What about on the return game? Who are some guys? Yeah. That, um, you know, we have we're we're trying to figure out between Dylan, between Sterling, between Jace, um, between Keegan, um, La James White. We've got a lot of different guys from a from a punt and kick return standpoint. Once again, we have not put that all together, meaning we're just doing drill work for those uh, for those uh, phases of it. But uh, um, you know, we've got to find more than one. We've got to have multiple guys on both punts. Punt returns and kick returns. We just haven't gotten that far in the phases of it. Any thoughts on uh, the college game adding the two-minute warning? Um, 
I think it's it, it'll be impactful as far as what you do with your timeouts and stuff. I think that will be as far as you know you're going to get that extra one whether you need it on defense uh, from a ability to stop the clock or no you're going to get it on on offense and you can um, you know everybody's so worried about all their timeouts all the time for good reason. Um, that you don't want to burn one, but maybe you can if you have a bad situation that you have to get yourself out of um, because you know you're going to get that extra one. Um, and so it's something that that's been a, a small piece of what we're working on right now for us through five practices. Man, it's the helmet communication. That's the number one thing that's out there. And I know we got – um, tablets on the sideline and stuff. We, we, we're not close to being ready to um, practice that. But we're practicing oh, Coach Wells to the quarterbacks, Coach Klanderman to the, to the linebackers and calling things out every day. And that's something that um, it, it's, it's kind of learning on the run. We're visiting with a lot of NFL teams, but uh, there's been a lot of little tweaks in, the, in, in rules this year, but uh, that's probably the biggest one for us that we can, we can work on right now. It's maybe too early to ask, but how comfortable is Connor Riley in his um, new role? Uh, you know, Rouse has been a football coach for a long time, so he's got really good comfort level. Um, but I think it's it's every, every team is different. And when I was calling things as a defensive coordinator, man, I, you can have a, a philosophy of doing something, but if you're better uh, in, in defending the run than you are defending the pass, if you're better as a blitz team, you may have to adjust. Um, I think it's uh, exciting to have – the offensive staff that we have there to try to find ways to get the ball to different players because we have a lot of guys that, that are going to uh, need touches and need the ball as well as not being able to just wear somebody out with it. Um, so I, it's going to be a work in progress, but he's, he's, he's a great football coach. So he's just trying to figure out where our pieces are and how to get the, get the ball to the playmakers. Earlier when you talked about running backs, it sounded like you really liked your depth there. Mm -hmm. Ideally, would you like to get four or five different guys involved if yeah, they're we, ready we, for it? We would like to. Um, everybody knows DJ's going to be the guy that um, is going to have the most carries right now. Um, DJ's a great player, and, and we've done a nice job of giving him the reps that he needs and then kind of shelving him a little bit right now because we need DJ fresh for uh, a, the long haul of the season. And we need to continue to see where Joe and LeJames are at because they've been in the program quite a while as well as Evan. But getting those guys the reps to see what they can handle uh, as an every down back. And then obviously seeing uh, different areas that we can uh, put Dylan in um, and not throw everything at him right away. Um, because he's new to the program in June, and just kind of find ways for us to to utilize Dylan and keep it keep it simple enough right now. As he's learning our whole offense, it's a lot of offense to learn. I think he's doing a heck of a job uh, right now. But then we'll start shrinking some things down once we get to game plan. Just wanted to ask about Andrew Line Gang. Where's where's he working in yeah. practice right now? Uh, Liney's could play either guard right now or either tackle. Um, we're keeping him inside right now as we continue to to evaluate guys um, at, at guard, but he could play outside if, if need be. Um, but some of the other guys that we want to see uh, on, on the edges, we we're, we're, we're don't want to take those reps away from a John Pastore or an Easton Kilty, so we're keeping Liney inside. But he'd be the guy that could swing and do the most for sure. What is going on at left tackle? How's the competition there? Um, I think we're going to see both guys play right now between Kilty and Pastore. Um, they both need to play uh, an awful lot. If it were, were playing tomorrow, we'd, it'd probably be a 50-50 deal. Let's see where it plays out. Let's see the health of both guys um, as we move forward. Uh, but uh, I, I'm excited because we have that third tackle right now with one of those guys opposite of Carver, as well as uh, Liney that could play a tackle or could spell uh, anybody inside because we could move Bubs inside the center if we had to and keep Liney at guard. We, we've got a lot of different combinations 
um, and, and, and we've talked at length about this, Coach Riley and I have, um, about making sure that we – and it will help having, having Drew Little be on the sideline and Riles being upstairs, uh, of Drew being able to help us with some substitutions so that we get more guys in at O-line. That's answer to my next question. Uh, Drew, how important is Drew Little right now? It, it, he's really important because, um, especially with Riles' new role, um, you know, Drew's just like having a second full-time O-line coach. And when when Riles is going to the pass game, it's like having a full your first full-time O-line coach because I've got a lot of trust in Drew, been around Drew um, for a few years uh, when I first started here. And then uh, we were fortunate um, to get him back in the off season, And I, I think it made the transition easier for Drew um, just like it did for anybody else when they can, when they lifted that band and everybody could coach and Drew knew what Riles' role is. It's a great opportunity for him um, to uh, mesh with those guys as as the O-line coach. So Drew's been a big help for him. No, you're working on some different things on defense. You probably don't want to get into specifics. Mm -hmm. But uh, are those moves trying to address kind of the rotation back towards running games in this conference? Um more towards personnel groupings uh, as far as, you know, we got a couple teams that we're going to play that are going to have a couple of tight ends all the time. We've got to get bigger when they, when they do that. And then uh, – and that potentially is some opponents we haven't played. And then there's some other ones that are going to spread you out uh, a little bit more and spin it around where then we've got to get smaller actually and get more speed guys. So we the, the depth where we thought we had – more of an issue at linebacker and having more skilled kids in the secondary and more D linemen um, going into camp feeling better because of some of the names we talked about at linebacker uh, of stepping up, which is just going to help all of our special teams because we're going to be able to keep really good players and really fresh guys on teams. Speaking of special teams, what are you looking at for the return specialists? As a returner? Yeah. Um, all those guys we talked about before between – Dylan and between Sterling, between um, Jace Brown, uh, Keegan Johnson. Uh, there's a lot of guys, Le James White. How is this, uh, Dante kind of settled among the wide receivers? Um, Seif's doing a really good job. Um, we've kind of kept it where he's playing more of an outside receiver, um, which has slowed slowed the game down for him some. Uh, but Seif's played a lot of a lot of high level football, and uh, I think it helped a bunch having him around in the spring. And then he was able to pick up where he left off, and he keeps learning what we're doing. Once again, we we do some things that we're trying to simplify so that we can get some of those guys. We can keep Seif, and we keep Spivey, and we can keep Keegan, and we can keep Jace and Sterling and Tybo and uh, Andre Davis. So there's a bunch of guys that we're trying to utilize more so that we can keep guys fresh as wide receivers and simplify it so they're not playing two and three spots.